Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint Go Slab the Gravekeeper. If you'd like to support the channel, our coffee and Patreon page is a link below. Now on to the video. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Pallid Witch Flesh. You can see a little area on his chest and arm there where it started painting and then realised the video wasn't recording, so nice way to start. But we're just going to coat all of his torso and skin in Pallid Witch Flesh. And once you've got a nice smooth layer of that, you may need one or two coats because it is quite a thin paint. We can move on to the next colour. Next we're going to move on to Citadel Corn Red. We're going to use this to do the robes at the bottom there. So you want to give this a nice smooth layer of corn red. You've got loads of creases and stuff like that and loads of details on there so we can pick those out as we're Shading and highlighting. This will give that that nice dark red colour that you want for the base, and then once you've shaded that, that'll start to go more of a maroon. And we can highlight that and get it looking nice. Next up, we've got Citadel Mephist on red. I'm going to use this to paint up all the little wounds that he's got over his body. There's various areas with little patches of missing skin, little bits showing through. He's got the little wounds where he's got those school decorated spikes going into his torso. So you just want to make sure you get all these wounds painted up red. So you can then move on to the shading later on. Get it so it all starts looking smart. Next up, it's Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to paint up his belt and the straps for that delightful mask that he's wearing. Very quick layer this one, but I think we do come back to Bane Blade Brown shortly. Next up is Citadel Lead Belcher. This will do all of the spikes, the hooks, the blade of that there shovel. There's plenty to do with this one, his belt buckle. It's like some little, looks like metal bits over the hand which is hanging from his belt. Like so. Next, Citadel Talarn Sand. I'm going to use this to paint the noose that's hanging from his belt. Another very quick layer, this one. Just make sure you get it into all the recesses. All around there. And then once you shade that and repaint the thread on it, it'll look pretty good. As always, if you do overspill onto a different area that's a different colour you can just touch that up with the colour that it should be as you go along. Next, Citadel Balor Brown. You can use this to paint the roots that are growing through the zombie's head and chest. You can also see them on the reverse of the coffin lid as well. The pieces of roots join onto the actual stump itself. So you can paint all of these with Balor Brown that'll give us a nice base for when we start working on the roots. Next up, we have a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh. We use this to paint up the skulls. The little bits of bone on the front of his mask there. You see both sides of that as it raises it quite high above his head. Got some weird metallic piece on the back of it too. Really is a very interesting miniature this one. Really fun to paint up. It is so peculiar and quite hideous. Now we're going to use some Citadel Dryad Bark. We're going to use this for the shaft of the shovel.
I'm also going to use this to do the pile of soil, which is kind of around the tree stump and the zombie and the coffin lid there too. I'm going to return to Citadel Bane Blade Brown, and we're also going to paint the coffin lid with this Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to say that properly. Once you've given that a nice smooth coat, we can use different contrasts on that to give a nice wood effect, as opposed to the nice leather effect that it'll give on his belt. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Mournfang Brown. I'm going to use this to paint the tree. Now a little bit of Citadel Deepkin Flesh. We're going to use this to paint up the zombie's skin. Slightly off camera here, apologies for that. We want to paint up all of the zombie with the deep kin flesh. He's kind of reaching out of the grave there. He's being pulled up with the coffin lid. So I'm going to be painting the area of the base around him with black, just so there's the dark void that he's coming out of. And then pile some of that Sterland mud and Sterland battle mire around him so that it blends in with the soil. It makes it look like there's a bit of a mound either side. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo Black, and we're going to use that to paint his shoes, like so. You can't see his other shoe down the other side, but I didn't spot that until later on. So we're going to start with Citadel Seraphim Sepia for the shades. I'm going to use this on all of the bone on the miniature, so you've got the two skulls and all the bones on the front of his head there. Also, if you want to reach into his mouth and paint that with a little bit of a fist on red or similar, that'll be good. Next shade we're going to use is Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast. So not really a shade, we're just going to use this to paint the Bane Blade Brown on the belt and also the strap around the back of his head. Like so. Next we're going to use some Citadel Contrast, Gore Grunt Affair, and we're going to use this to paint the coffin lid. Whereas the snake bite leather gives the Bane Blade Brown a nice leathery look. When you paint the Gore Grunt Affair over it, it gives it quite a nice, almost like a stained wood look, so maybe a little bit too posh for the Zomble that's coming out the top here, but it gives it a nice wooden look nonetheless. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Rightland Flesh Shade. I'm going to put this on reasonably sparingly. You don't want to give it too much of that deep tone or shade in the recesses because you want his skin to look quite pale and bloodless and a bit horrible and rotting. Not the light, nicest looking fellow, so we want to keep him looking a little bit foul and a little bit dead. Next up, Citadel Drucci Violet. We're going to use this on all of his robes at the bottom there. This will darken that down and give you that nice deep kind of maroon shade that we want for his robes at the bottom. You can also use this to shade all the little wounds over his body. You might want to use a smaller brush than I'm using on the robes here just so that you can get that into the wounds and get them a little bit darker, so the details are showing up. I'm going to use some Citadel Athonian Camo Shade. I'm going to use this on the zombie's flesh. Now, like we did with the Reichland Flesh Shade, if you just give this a fairly reasonably thin layer, it'll just give that quite sick and rotten look. 
to the skin and then when we start building up the layers that will give it that kind of nice dead zombie look. So now I'm going to use some Citadel Agraxair shade. I'm going to use this to paint up the rope. The noose which is hanging from his belt. Also paint over the tree which is growing across the top of the coffin lid and also the roots which are coming through the zombie. I'm going to use some Citadel Nuln Oil, so we're going to be painting all of the metallics with this. So really the only metallic is the lead belcher, so paint all of the lead belcher with the Nuln Oil. That'll tone down the shine on that, get into all the recesses and bring out the details. Use this also on the handle of the shovel, the dryad bark. That also go into the recesses and bring out the details from that too. Next up, Citadel Dryad Bark. I'm going to start reapplying some colour to this top layer of robes because I didn't actually realise when I first started painting them that he does have a different colour part on the top here. So paint up this top part with Citadel Dryad Bark. When you're looking at the picture of it and the painted version of it, you'll notice it looks kind of like a sort of strange pale violety colour, but we start off with the dryad bark and then when we shade that you can start getting it look almost spot on. So using the Drucci Violet on top of the dryad bark on his back there. We're also going to give a second coat of Drucci Violet to his robes. This will darken them down quite nicely. And when you're applying that to the robes on the back too, unless that turns them into a Quite a nice drab violet colour, which is what we're after for that part of the robe. Now we're going to use Pallid Witch Flesh, we're going to start working on his skin again. So using a nice thin brush to reapply the Pallid Witch Flesh. We're going to be looking at trying to get all of the details, like the razors in the skin and the different details that are standing out painted up here so that you only have the shade in the recesses. There is plenty of detail on the skin as well, it's all stretched and wrinkled in some parts and taut in other parts, quite, quite a hideous torso. Now we're going to add some white to the Pallid Witch Flesh, I'm going to do the first layer of highlights on his skin. So you're only painting about 50% of the area that you did with the Pallid Witch Flesh with this, so that you can get those highlights looking good. You also only want to be applying these to the areas that would be catching a light more than the rest, so maybe the underside of your stomach, maybe do a slight highlight, but not too much. You wouldn't do the third highlight with it, or the second highlight rather. Just do a little bit with this one. But the areas that are quite open, you want to give them a nice amount of highlight to make them stand out. I'm going to add a little bit of Mephisto on red to the previous mix. And you want that to just be slightly pinker than the skin colour. You don't want it too dark, you don't want it too light. Just a little bit pinker than the skin tone. Now, as you look at this, you can't really see it too well. It's slightly overexposed. But you want it to be slightly pinker than the rest of the skin tone, like scar tissue. And then we'll pink that up a little bit more with a wash a little bit later on. We're going to start working on the zombie skin now. We're going to go back to Citadel Deepkin Flesh. When you start reapplying this, this will give that kind of slightly off-white, bluish kind of hue. And on top of that green shade that will be in the recesses, will make it look quite dead. Now I'm going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to the Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to do a first layer of highlights on that little zombie. Hopefully a bit more on screen.
Basically, you want to be covering about 50% of the area that you covered with the deep kin flesh. Annoyingly, that's off camera as we speak. But if you cover about 50% of the area on the previous layer, you can't go wrong with that. You want to think about where the light's going to be catching it and highlighting those areas. So now I'm going to go onto the Rakarth flesh and start highlighting these sections of bone. So you've got the hand there and the bone on the skulls and also the bones on the front of that face mask too. There's also a few little bits of bone you can see through the wounds here as well, ribs and such. So you can give them a little spot of colour with the Rakarth flesh too if you want. I'm going to mix some Citadel Ushabti bone with the Rakarth flesh. I'm going to start highlighting these bones here. As always the first highlight you want to be covering about maybe 50% of the previous layer. So you're leaving some of that Rakarth flesh as well as the shades in the recesses. I'm going to mix a little bit of white with the previous mix and just do one final highlight on the bone. This is mainly to highlight details and edges and things like that. Don't want to be doing too much with this one, just picking out those details and really making them stand out. Also use this to do his teeth too. I'm going to use some Vallejo white. I'm just going to pick out those individual teeth to make them stand out a little bit more. If when you're doing this you squish some paint between two teeth, you can just get maybe a bit of a Grax Earth Shade or Seraphim Sepia and just put a tiny vertical stroke of that into the gap between the teeth and that should bring out the detail again quite nicely. I'm going to start working on the robes at the bottom here. So it's the more maroon coloured ones, we're going to use Citadel Corn Red and start reapplying colours to the raised areas and the areas that will be catching a lot of light. As I said earlier, there's plenty of details on this robe. You've got holes in it, you've got a little bit of folded material. You've also got all the creases where it's stretched across between his legs. So you can highlight all these areas and really bring that to life. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Wasdaka Red to highlight that corn red. I'm going to be doing about 50% of the same area that you've just done. Picking out those areas and it really will look like the light's catching them. Because you've made those robes quite dark as well, it gives quite a nice contrast to have those nice light red highlights. Very interesting figure to paint this, lots of different things on it, but really did enjoy painting them. Now I'm going to do a final highlight on the robes at the bottom with Citadel Pink Horror. This is mainly going to be to do edge highlights and a few little spot highlights here and there where you've got little bits of material and things like that. And this really will bring it to life, this is the, the final highlight on the robes, but I think it does a really good job of just kind of adding that little bit of lifeness to the miniature. Now we're going to use Citadel Balor Brown, we're going to start working on the roots. So you want to give a coat of Balor Brown to the top sides of the roots, leave the underside shaded. There's a few little details on there, so if you can pick out the little recesses and leave them shaded too. Just trying to highlight the top surfaces and top edges of that. I'm 
Now I'm going to add some Vallejo white to the Balor brown. We're just going to highlight the top parts of these roots. Like so. I'm going to use Balor Brown and we're going to start working on the leather area. So you've got the belt and also the strap on the back. We're going to be doing some light highlights to the top and the bottom edges of the belt. And the details on that belt there. Also the strap around the back of his head. I'm going to add a little bit of Mornfang Brown back to the tree stump. I'm also going to paint some of the grain on the wood too. Don't want to do too many of these, just do enough that it shows up the different grains and the patterns on that wood and also on the tree as well because there's details on the tree stump. I'm going to add a little bit of Citadel Rackarth flesh to the Mornfang Brown to lighten that up. And then we're going to start painting on some of the grain a little bit more and highlighting those patterns in the wood. This is where it starts to make it look a little bit more of old wood because it's sort of losing that colour and it's not as brown and varnished as it initially looked with that gold grunt of fur on it. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Contrast Wild Wood. I'm going to use this just to paint the little tufts of hair on each side of his head. It's a quick and easy way of doing the hair because it'll go into the recesses and darken them. And leave slightly less on the actual hair itself. So it's a little bit lighter and we're just going to leave the hair like that on the side of the zombie. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Pink Horror. And that is going to be for the tongue. Nice Ziggy come to harass me while I'm doing the video again. I'm going to use Citadel Talon Sand and add the detail back to the noose on the back of his robes there hanging from his belt. So you just want to be following the pattern on the rope, painting each one of those with a little bit of Talon Sand just to bring out the detail and make them stand out a bit more. Next up, Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm just going to use this ever so slightly. Really, really, really thin layer of this just to pick out some of the edges and highlights on this robe at the back. I want it to look faded, like old cloth. You can hear those pulling sounds. That was the cat trying to shred my chair. But just to bring out those details and make the robes look like all the frays are faded and to show those details quite well. Next we're going to be using some Citadel Dryad Bark and we're going to lightly dry brush this onto the handle of the shovel. The reason dry brushing this rather than painting it with vertical lines is the details are only on the front and back so depending on if you are painting it vertically is sometimes quite easy to get a little splodge of paint into those recesses so the dry brush takes care of that and makes it a bit more difficult to do. I'm also going to use a normal brush to paint the dryad bark back onto the soil. Now I'm going to add a little bit of Bane Blade Brown to the dryad bark and just pick out some of the details on the shovel handle. There is quite a few striations and recesses and stuff like that on it. 
so you can pick those out on the front and the back. You can also add a few to the sides if you want to as well, just to make them stand out. Now I'm going to add a little bit more Bane Blade Brown and do some final pick outs of details. I wanted the handle on the shovel to look kind of like the old faded and bleached wood that you get. So it's been well used. See if it was faded and bleached like that, it's probably going to be quite weak as well, so it wouldn't be much copper as a shovel. But that's the effect I was going for. So now I'm going to mix a little bit of dryad bark and also Citadel Mornfang Brown. I'm going to use this to highlight the soil, which is built up around the coffin. And also because I've used that Sterland Mud and Sterland Battlemire around where the coffin lid is being ripped up, we're also going to dry brush it across the top of that as well to blend it all in together and give that a same kind of colour across the whole soil. So now we're going to use some Vallejo Red Wash. This is really, really good stuff. really like using this. What we're going to do for this is use it around the scar which we painted with a slightly pinker version of the skin tone earlier on. We're also going to use it around each of the wounds in his flesh, and other parts where there's bits of him missing or bits of him opened up, just to make them look very red and tender. While Caroberg Crimson is a very, very deep red when you apply it like this, the red wash gives it that angry, kind of light red, pinkish look, which I really do like. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Caroberg Crimson. I'm going to use this to do a few little blood runs from his mouth and from the open wounds on his arms and his torso. I'm using the Wargamer character brush from Army Painter here. It gives a really nice point. If you just use a tiny little bit of that Caroberg Crimson on it, you can get some nice runs. I'm going to use some Citadel Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use this on the blade of the shovel and also the neck of the shovel and the little base on the other end of the handle. I'm just going to add that to give it a weathered and dirty look. Like so. Next up is a little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to do the same again, just add a little bit of that to the shovel and the areas that wouldn't be striking the mud too much. Give it that almost starting to rust look. An easy way to do weathering on stuff like that. You can also do this on the hooks and the metal spikes on his shoulders and that little metal dome that he's got on the back of his head. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Blood for the Blood God technical paint, just so that we can add some fresh runs of blood around his mouth, on his chest, and his body. While you've added the Caroberg Crimson, which is a bit darker, it looks like older blood. You can use a little bit of a Grax Air Shade mixed with that if you wanted to. I just tend to use the Caribou Crimson, save doing too many mixes. And then you have the Blood for the Blood God that looks like the fresher blood. It's still shiny and still that lighter shade of red. You can see how that shows up over the red wash too. So here we have the Necron Compound from Citadel, the dry paint. We're just going to lightly dry brush that across the shovel in the direction that it would be being used. So I'm dragging that vertically downwards. And the reason for that is that if he's ramming the shovel into the ground, those edges are going to be struck in that way, and that's going to scrape off any dirt or get down to the bare metal a little bit more. So I'm brushing that on in a direction that it's going to be struck to highlight that in that particular way. 
And with that, that is Gorslav the Gravekeeper finished. I really, really enjoy painting this miniature. It's cracking details on it. Lots of little things that you can play around with, but really happy with how he turned out. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.